you want to make sure your parts fit nice and tight together without any gaps like this. On these ends, if there's an air gap, when you try to tack them, the top will burn away from the bottom. If they're touching, they'll want to fuse together a lot easier. If I was welding a lot of these, I'd make a fixture so you could just put them together quicker, but for this video, we're just going to do this. Square it up. It's got to go right where this little center punch dot is. So that gets it perpendicular this way, and then this one gets it nice and vertical. The material is 70 thousandths thick, and I'm setting the welder at 70 amps. Then to make tack welding easier, you can just rest the cup on the base metal so you're not shaking around. Just put it right where you want it. And then if you need to, you can rock up and down a little bit like this. So the parts have to be touching real good to tack that easy. A trick that makes welding the ends easier is you can gob on tacks first before you run your weld. Because if you run if you run your weld and you try to weld around the ends, you get to the end and it's real hot and it tries burning away. I know a lot of beginners have problems with that. So if you have a lot of metal gobbed on there before you run your welds, it's less susceptible to burning out. Hopefully that makes sense. So now I have that to run my weld into. And same for the other side, so I can put a big gob right here. And run this weld into that. And on steel parts like this, if you want to, you can just rest your cup down and slide it, drag it. I don't like to do that on aluminum because aluminum is softer and it'll scratch the parts and you see it in the end. This material is pretty pitted, so you're not going to get really good looking welds with it unless you clean it better. But make sure your tungsten is nice and sharp and concentric at the end. If it's irregular or off to one side, it's going to shoot your arc and cause you problems. Thanks for watching.